Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. First of all, let me say I apologize for what happened yesterday. YouTube did some um, editing on my video and it put the words out of sync and I had to fix it. So that's what happened, but there you go. All right. So now we're going to continue on. There's some more information that's come out. We have a lot to cover again. So let's just jump in there and get there, shall we? Let's go. Now we're starting off, I showed you yesterday some pictures of beet trees and Eugenie. They were out for the big lunch. Well, some more pictures came out and I just love what Eugenie is wearing. I think it just showcases her pregnancy so nicely. And I love to see the two of them out and about together doing their thing. I think it's, it's nice. And yes, each person, each group went to a different village or town or whatever you want to say. Beatrice here is dancing. Woo! And then, of course, I just want to point out that Princess Eugenie put up a wonderful Instagram post after the coronation in support of King Charles. Now, just as an FYI, of course, number 10 Downing Street, they had their very own coronation lunch as well. And of course, Jill Biden and her granddaughter were there. Looks like they had a fabulous time. Princess Anne also went to a village or county, whatever you want to call it. And she also participated in the big lunch. I just love that the entire royal family came out and got behind Charles to help. You know what I'm saying? All right, moving on. The Middletons, everybody was like, were the Middletons there? Yes, they were. Uh, now, they weren't there with their spouses. Pippa was joined by her brother and, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Middleton, and they all looked wonderful. Next up, it became time for the Coronation Concert. That was an absolutely amazing-looking stage. I just find it interesting how they're able to just build these things. You know what I'm saying? And you watched as the time went on and the place got more and more full of people. The crowds. I mean... You could tell that this was going to be a big night. You know, people kept saying nobody cared. Oh, I think the people cared. And by the way, just FYI, 18 million people watched that coronation. All right, so let's move on. It's the coronation concert. First up, Peter Phyllis, Phillips sorry, and his girlfriend showed up. Everybody looked happy. Everybody looked relaxed. There didn't seem to be any family tensions that I saw. Next up, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, even though she was not invited to the actual coronation, she was invited to the concert, which I thought was very nice. I mean, she and Andrew do live together, you guys, you know, uh, you know, why not? And she is Eugenie and them's mother. And then, you know, the picture started coming out of everybody sitting down. Looked fabulous. All right. Next up, Sophie showed up. She was dressed in a coral colored dress. She looked, as usual, fabulous. Her daughter was like a showstopper in that black outfit. Now, the one thing about Sophie that everybody was going on about was that she's the queen of moves. Apparently, when Lionel Richie was uh, playing, she was dancing. I agree. The woman's got some moves for sure. Next up, Zara and her husband, Mike. Now, we know they went out the Friday night before. We know they were out very late. We saw the pictures. She looked like she was falling asleep in the Abbey during the actual coronation because they were out and about too late partying without the children. That's what was going on. Trust me, when the kids aren't around, you do your best. So come to find out that she and her husband both have moves. <laughs> they were thoroughly enjoying themselves let me tell you next up you have Catherine, who showed up in an alexander mcqueen suit we've seen this suit before she looked stunning you know with her height and her figure she can carry anything now the people who really stole the show were george and charlotte louis was not there it was going to be a late night it was too late for him but George and Charlotte were thoroughly enjoying the show. I believe that one of the highlights of the show for them, if I'm not mistaken, was Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy. They were seen both laughing during that skit. 
and why not? Kermit the Frog is a star in his own right. Everybody loves him. And Miss Piggy is iconic. Come on, you guys. Who doesn't love Kermit and Miss Piggy? No wonder they were laughing. So they're all sitting there together. Now, people said there was no interaction between Eugenie and Catherine, but photos have come out that show that that is absolutely actually not correct. So next up, King Charles showed up uh, with Camilla. Everybody was yelling and screaming and waving. And the next thing you knew, um, William took to the stage. He gave a fabulous tribute to his father. He mentioned the environment. He mentioned his lifetime of service. He told everybody how proud he was of him. I think it was a very heart touching moment. Very sweet. So the concert got started and during the concert, the drones came out. Do you guys remember the drones from the Platinum Jubilee? I can't even imagine how they do these things, but they do. And the, it, it was just a fabulous sight to see up in the sky. And thank you to Chris Ship for these um, video and pictures of the drones. You guys have to admit, that's pretty cool. I can't even imagine how they control all of those drones from the ground, you know, and you know how many drones there are? I mean, I just, it, same thing with the Jubilee. I don't understand how they were able to do all that, but okay. All right, let's move on now. So the performers took to the stage. You had everything from ballet to Nicole Schrezinger. I hope I'm saying that correctly. FYI, I love that dress. She's gorgeous. Uh, you had half Cameroonian, half Nigerian singer Tiwa Savage, I think is how you say her, her name. Uh, of course, we had the fabulous, fabulous Lionel Richie, who had everybody up out of their seats dancing. Katy Perry sang a couple of songs. Her dress was amazing. And I took some of these pictures just to show you the crowds from her point of view. I mean, that was just phenomenal. There was Peter Tong. These people were amazing. Andrea Bocelli and Sir Brian Turfell sang the song, You'll Never Walk Alone. There was a James Bond type skit where they highlighted all of Charles's military service and it ended with Tom Cruise saying that he could be his wingman anytime. There was so much more, but really just too much to cover in this video, but all in all, a fabulous success. Now we're going to stop for a minute to talk about Harry. All right, more Netflix content, if this is true. Apparently, Prince Harry walked into the Abbey, sat down next to Jack Brooks Bank, and started to have a conversation. Now, a lip reader there said that Mr. Brooks Banks was asking about a meeting, and Harry said, it's sad, I'm fed up, I've tried talking to him. Uh, and then picking up later on, apparently they were talking about Megan, uh, and uh, Harry said something like, no, she's at... And Jack said, and she is. And Harry said, well, it's not ideal. And the conversation supposedly continued with Harry saying, uh, or with Mr. Brooksbank saying, if it makes you feel any better, even I can do it, but it's not quite the life, is it? And Harry shook his head and said, I haven't had time for that. Not if it's over. And then Harry said, it's an eventuality. So you have to wonder if he had a meeting with Charles, did he attempt to meet with his father? Um, did he get more content for Netflix, which may be why he had that smile on his face as he headed to the airport? He's got more woe is me stuff. Oh, my Lord. Next up, uh, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and Prince William and their three children made a surprise appearance to help out with the big help out. So they went to the third Upton Scout group of Sloth, um, which is a special choice because Catherine is president of the Scouting Association. First ever official royal engagement for Louis. Now they joined in to help the Scouts renovate a Scout hut and they helped take you know, part in, there was some planting, some sanding, 
some painting. Louis put his handprint on the wall. Very sweet. He went to the bottom so he wouldn't cover anybody else's um, handover. You know what I'm saying? Princess Charlotte um, was painting, very focused. When she got done with the painting, then she decided she was going to try her hand at some archery. Very nice. Uh, she seems to be about as good as that as her mother is. Now, people were very, very excited with Louis. They were like, I could use him in my garden. Although he shoveled some dirt into the wheelbarrow. He tried to push the wheelbarrow and then it got stuck <laughs> in the dirt. And his mother had to come over and help him with that. Now, uh, I mean, come on. He's a kid. He's five. You know, you can't help it. So the next thing that happens is they're making s'mores. And Louis is like give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And these pictures just don't catch the look on his face that he had when he put that first bite in his mouth. Louis, we all feel exactly the same way. And of course, after s'mores and painting, he also tried his hand at archery. I love that kid. All in all, this was a good thing for them for the big help out. Love it. Next, we have Sophie and Edward as part as their big help out day. They went to a puppy class for the Blind Association at the Training Center in London. They both looked fabulous. She was wearing wedges, which I found interesting to train puppies, but okay. They were at a pop-up coronation cafe where the dogs are trained to get used to the bustling coffee, you know, shop environment so that people could take their animals out to places like this and it's not a big problem you guys know what i'm saying now you should know that people were asking sophie to recreate her dance moves from the night before and she happily obliged she is the dancing queen all right next up all right it's princess anne's turn for the big help out she attended a service of celebration at gloucester cathedral which recognized local volunteers. She went with her husband, Vice Admiral Sir Tim Lawrence. And of course, this was during the third day of coronation celebrations. She looked absolutely fabulous. I love her in that blue teal looking coat. Next up, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester did their big help out Thing by going to the Coptic Orthodox Church and there was a Coronation Street party there for the local community hosted by the young volunteers. Very nice. All right, you guys, we knew it was inevitable. As soon as the Coronation was over, Megan was going to pop up. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the pictures were taken by Backgrid dial pap The second thing you'll notice is she's posing. Nobody stands there, looks left, looks right, moves over, hands on the hip, big smile. She sees the camera. She's looking right at the camera. Look at me. I'm a supermodel. I mean, come on, guys. I, I This is such a setup. It's ridiculous. So that's the first thing that I noticed. The second thing that I noticed is who she's with. It's her typical lackeys. Same people, she's paying them. They're not friends. They're paid employees. She doesn't have any friends. Have you guys noticed that? You only see her with paid employees. Also, she's got her cell phone out half the time. When you're truly jogging and you're really hiking for your health, um, you don't have your cell phone out in your hand, okay? She knew Backward was there. So did her friends. As you can see, they're smiling for the camera. Number three, normal people don't hike with diamonds and, and, and tank watches and all of this expensive, super expensive jewelry on their arms, on their hands. I, when I work out or I hike and exercise, I don't even wear my wedding rings. But we know what she was really doing there, you guys. She was merching. Look at the necklace. Oh, here it is. This is how much it costs. I, I happen to agree with this particular Twitter user. I think she did this because Catherine's pictures came out. And I think she's trying to show that she can. she's as athletic as Catherine is. Nope. Now, I only have one thing to say about this. 
I'm really surprised that her new agency hasn't warned her about doing these kinds of tricks where she's constantly, you know, putting stuff up, trying to rival the royal family. That's one of the reasons why people don't like her. I'm really surprised that they didn't say to her, don't do this, it's a bad idea. Or maybe they are telling her, but she thinks she knows best. Yeah, no. Moving on. Next up, this was a bit of controversy. One of my subscribers sent me this email. This young lady from Bridgerton, Adoa and Doha, I don't think I'm saying it right, went on live TV and made a nasty comment. Listen to this. ...from the, uh, the, uh, the rich diversity of the Abbey to a terribly white balcony. I'm <laughs> very struck by yeah. that. I'm also looking at those younger generations. Well, let me tell you, people were very upset. This is what Talk TV had to say about it. Oh my goodness, listen. So that is Anjoa Ando. I'm really upset. She's from Bridgerton, which is a major show, and loads of you will have watched it. But she's now saying that the coronation, or rather the balcony, was too white. Let me make some points that are really important. We have seen a country come together representing all manner of people from all different backgrounds and all types of countries, whether they've been migrants recently or people who were in the country before. Flella Benjamin, to me, represents the fact that we are willing to embrace people who've come as migrants to the country. However, on the balcony, it is for members of the royal family. There is one non-white member of the royal family, that is Meghan Markle, and she chose not to come because she wants to seethe with rage in her Scarface mansion. And also chose to leave the royal family. And chose to and, leave the yeah. royal family. I am sick of this because I believe that Andoa... And Joa Andoa is actually a racist. And I'll tell you why she's a racist. Because she thinks that it is unacceptable for a group of white people to stand on a balcony as a family and not, therefore, not invite loads of other people in. You know something? I believe that Britain is the most abrasive, the least racist, the most tolerant country on earth. We have seen this country taking more people from a more diverse background, and there are a tiny percentage of those people who have benefited hugely. And this woman is on one of the biggest television shows in the country, a percentage of them who stick two fingers up to this country. I'm going to say on Saturday night, love it or leave it. You know, the reality is if you don't like the United Kingdom, if you don't believe that we are the least racist country on earth, then go to a country that you think is less racist. Why? that you tried out try out uh, going to uh, countries around the world where there's ethnic violence where there's racism where there's discrimination against people on the grounds of their religion i'm not claiming that britain is perfect no. but what i will say to you is you know something we have got a royal family that is historic i'm sorry that very few members of them are black though we've seen with prince harry that that is likely to change the idea that that event did not represent this country is for the birds i think bridgerton should sack her i think we should shove her i didn't really know who she was anyway i'm disgusted by the clip and i think that 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 you're seeing on your screen now is what we should be proud of. A man who's worked his entire life to bring this country together and an overly privileged, obnoxious leftist from the telly should go and sod off. There was a lot of backlash. Uh, people were really, really upset and they didn't understand why she would say something like that. I mean, when you look at her, when you look at the job that she has, you know, when you look at her stardom is rising, and thank you to Megan's Mole for these photos, when you look at the fact that her husband is white, when you look at the fact that her mother is white, that was really a nasty thing to say, what she said. And um, so what has happened now? There have been complaints to Ofcom over what she said. Next up, David Olusaga. I think I'm saying that right. He's the gentleman that was on the Netflix docu-series and he said all those horrible things about the UK and he's totally on Harry and Meghan's side. Here's what I don't understand. He got an OBE from the royal family. So if he thinks that the royal family is so bad, then why don't you give back your award? As a matter of fact, if the UK is that bad, give back your award and go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Hypocrite. All right, I'm ending this with this picture. This is what the sugars did. But notice, Megan is the one sitting and Harry's just shunted to the side. 
I think that is the theme of his life. <laughs> oh my God. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Put those comments below and make them good. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. If you've already hit the button, double check and make sure you're still subscribed. For those of you that want to contact me, go into the description box. You'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, as well as a physical address in case there's something you want to send. For those of you who've donated through my coffee fund and through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.